God bless you today. I want to welcome you again to another edition of Just Before You Go to Bed, Preparing Souls for Heaven. May God bless you richly today, even as we go on. Thank you for joining us today in the name of Jesus. May God enrich you. May God bless you. May God enlarge your coast in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, as you join us here, do us a favor. Invite somebody to church on Sunday, please. And God is going to bless you because when you do that, God is going to enlarge you. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Today, I want to talk about how to turn away the wrath of God. How to turn away the wrath of God. If you look at Deuteronomy 9 verse 8, Father, we bless you today as you open the heart of the people. As you open the heart of the people, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at Deuteronomy 9 verse 8. It tells us, uh, praise God, Deuteronomy 9 verse 8 it says also in Herod you provoked the Lord to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you it means that God can be angry the wrath of God can be so strong that God could could destroy a person or a people when they have no honor when they have no honor for him when they disrespect him praise God When they disrespect him, God can destroy a people. Praise God. What am I trying to establish today? I want to establish that God can be angry. Now, if you look at Exodus 32, Exodus 32, verse 10 and 11. Praise God. Exodus 32, verse 10 and 11. He said, now therefore let me alone that my wrath, that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. What does it, and, and in fact verse 11, 11 says, and Moses, Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, why doth thy, thy wrath wax hot against thy people? which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. God could be angry at anybody if you dishonor him, if you treat his grace with contempt, if you do not honor him as God, the wrath of God can come against you. Praise God. But the thing is, if God can be angry, what do we do? How do we turn away the wrath of God? I pray that as I take these three, four points today, that God will use it to turn your life around. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be very slow, quiet this night, because I want you to understand this is a turning point, or it could be a turning point in your life. So just follow me and help me share this today. And invite somebody. Like I started with, a word came out of my mouth that I didn't plan to say. On Sunday, invite somebody to church because you might just be saving a soul. Just do what I've said. Praise God. <clears throat> For you to turn away the wrath of God, one of the first things you must do is to have knowledge of the nature of God. How does God operate? How does God do his things? How does God get angry? And is there the other part of God? The first thing about his nature is that God is not always angry and his anger can be turned away. Nehemiah 9.17 tells me that God is slow to anger. And then if you look at uh, uh, Micah 7 18 it tells me that God delights in showing mercy 
So one who can get angry is slow to anger and delights in showing mercy. It means that there is something, a soft spot about him that his anger will always not last forever. And he does not like really to be angry except when pushed to the extreme. But yet, when you cry out, his mercy overrules his anger if you cry out. So let's look at a few scripture. Isaiah 57. I want to just open my Bible a little bit this night. Isaiah 57. I would have just been, been getting them off my hand, I know, offhand, but somehow I feel that I want to read along with you this night because I just feel the power of God. You know, Isaiah 57, verse 16, it, it reads, For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wrought. For the spirit shall, for the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. Now, what God is trying to say is that I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wrought. God said, I will always not be wrought. That's the nature of God. We have to understand. Praise God. Like I told you in Nehemiah 9, 17, 17, he says that God is slow, is slow to anger. Um, and Nahim 1, 3 will tell you that. Psalm 145, verse 8, will explain these things to you, that God is slow to be angry. He, and, and then, like I told you, that um, Micah 7, 18 says that he delights in showing mercy. So these things, this is a nature of God that if you understand, then you can turn his wrath around. God made himself so flexible that when he's angry, he gives you room to turn his wrath around out. You know, to turn it away. He, in fact, God always gives us the privilege to turn around things, especially His wrath. Now, uh, I, I, I think I must have looked at uh, Numbers 11, 1 to 2. Let me look at Numbers 11, 1 to 2 again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Numbers 11, 1 to 2. Praise God. And I want to show you, praise Jesus. I want to show you a few things, praise God. Numbers 11, 1 to 2. I just want to show you a little bit things about God. And when the people complained, 11, 1 to 2, and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord had it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. Now, God was angry. Why? Because they complained, even though he was doing so much for them, but they complained. Now, and verse 2, it says, And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Did you see? It tells you that God will always make room for you to appease his anger. No matter how angry God is, you can turn it away if you know the right things to do. And that's why the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you don't turn the anger of God away, it can consume you. That's the way God works. He has given you all that you need for life and for godliness. He has taught you how to turn his anger away. So if you remain where his anger is going to consume you, there is nothing that God is going to do for you. And it is too important that you understand this. This thing I'm talking about is too important that you understand it, that you can turn the wrath of God away. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I wonder if I am I am really online. Praise God. I, I think I may not just be online i'm trying to find myself if i am online today praise god <laughs> hallelujah amen. amen amen jesus is lord uh, i hope that as i am streaming i am I'm online because i can't find myself online praise jesus hallelujah if somebody can uh, can just uh, give me praise jesus amen Okay, good. I think I've had myself, but I think I'm streaming somewhere else. Praise Jesus. I will share it. Praise God. When I'm streaming, I will share it later uh, because I'm streaming on a different platform, other different platforms, and not directly on my platform. Praise God. Hallelujah. You just uh, give me a minute to find out 
if I am uh, streaming, praise God. I think I'm online, I can see there, praise Jesus, okay? I proceed in Jesus' name, amen. So now, what exactly, if I let me stay here, praise Jesus. In fact, uh, it then becomes very necessary that we understand one is the nature of God, one, that God delights in showing mercy, you can have peace on her anger, and, and if you understand those things, you always have victory. Now, number two, remove the reason why he's angry or forsake it. If the moment you know why God is angry with you, deal with it. It is too important that the moment you know why God is angry with you, try and deal with it. That is the key. If you don't deal with it, if you don't deal with it, it's going to consume you. Absolutely. If you know the reason why God is angry with you, if you know why God is angry with you, then you can have victory instantly. I'll give you cases. Uh, In Joshua 7.13, Joshua 7.13, let me, like I said today, I just want to do a little bit of of reading so that you, you know, we can absolutely understand Joshua 7.13. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Joshua 7, 13. You know, I, I want to do a little bit of reading with you so you can understand. Though it might take a little bit of time so uh, uh, that you can understand. Joshua 7, 13. Achan has stolen, you know, being one of the leaders of Israel. And Israel was suffering the wrath of God by reason of that. Then, as Joshua was crying, uh, verse 13 says, God said, Oh, sanctify the people and say, Extendify yourself against tomorrow for, uh, no, I, I think it has to be, it has to be before then. Okay, verse 10, from verse 10, I prefer to read from verse 10, praise the Lord. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus before thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I committed, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of their costing, I have also stolen and dissembled us and, and, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. When you know that there is a thing you have done in your life that breaks the wrath of God, what do you do? Take, take care of it, remove it immediately. If it's restitution, restitute immediately. And the moment you know that this is what has brought the anger of God, Once you remove it, the anger of God is going to go away. You see, God does not delight in being angry. God does not enjoy being angry. So whenever he gets angry, he he kind of, what am I going to say? He kind of sets things for you to know he's angry and also sets things for you to help you get out. I remember the case of Moses. When Moses was going to Egypt, when God was sent him to Egypt, on the way, God almost killed him. God was angry at him. Then suddenly, Sapporah, the wife, took uh, a sharp object and circumcised the children instantly. And the wrath of God was, you know, was abated instantly. So what does that mean? That God is not the respect of anybody. No matter who you are, if there is sin, God can be upset with you. Then the easiest way to turn away his wrath is to remove that sin from among you. There are people you bring into your life, the wrath of God will come into your life. Why? Because they are carriers of the wrath of God. And when you associate with them, the wrath of God can come upon you. So the easiest way to get away the wrath of God is to cut it and separate it. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, uh, when you have removed the, the, the accosting or the reason why God is angry, then the next you truly repent and humble yourself. If you look at Second uh, Chronicles thirty two twenty six, Second Chronicles thirty two twenty six, I want to read this for you too, so that you can see the mystery. Thirty three verse uh, thirty two verse twenty six, Second Chronicles thirty two verse twenty six. God had told Hezekiah he was going to die. God was angry. God said, Hezekiah, you're going to die. Verse 20 said, he said, notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord 
came not upon them in the day or in the days of Hezekiah. When you humble yourself and repent before God, the Bible says that he whosoever confesses his sins, God is faithful and just to forgive. No matter once God is angry at you and you know there is a sin, take care of that sin, and God's anger is gone. So easy. You remember David? David in 2 Samuel 12, around verse 13. God was angry at him because of the lady Bathsheba. And he cried out when a sentence was passed upon him. And God quickly forgave him. He repented and was humble. You remember in Jonah 3 verse 5, the people of Nineveh. God said, well, he sent Jonah to tell them that he was going to destroy Nineveh. But what happened? The people cried out. They humbled themselves. They fasted. And God said, ah, I've seen how these people have humbled themselves. And God reversed his judgment and did not destroy the neighbor. Can I tell you, it is such an easy thing to turn the wrath of God away because God does not delight in destroying. God does not delight in being angry. So whenever God is angry, he himself will set things in motion for you to be able to break his anger away, to turn it away. So what do you do? You become attentive when things begin to go wrong around your life. Begin to ask God. Begin to find out where he's angry. Begin to repent. Begin to humble yourself. If you find it out, restitute if it's possible, Repent and plead the blood of Jesus. It's so easy. You know, some people go on living their life as if the wrath of God is upon them every day. No. Deal with it. God is full of mercy. He delights in showing mercy. That's one thing about God that I found out. He delights in showing mercy. Whenever I know that I've not pleased him, I lay on my head, in, you know, on, lay down immediately and begin to beg him. You know, or I've just said something that is not right, or you know, and the Spirit of God convicts me immediately. I begin to cry out, Please have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to say it again. I'm not going to respond this way again. I'm not going to act this way again. And soon you see the peace of God will return, will return to you. Praise God. Now, uh, then another thing is to pray to the Lord. Like I told you, Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. When you pray to the Lord concerning a particular sin, maybe even sin of members of your church, sin of other people that are close to you, you can intercede for them. And God can bring in mercy and open their eyes to see their mistakes. Especially a pastor. Some people will think it's not true, but it's true. A pastor can pray for the sin of the members of the church. And God can show mercy. And one of the ways God will show mercy is that God begins to show those people their fault. Praise the Lord. It is, it, is a, it is a mystery. But I want to come to something that is very important this night to me. It's too important to me. And I want to show you this in Psalm 7 verse 11. Everybody please pick your Bible. And I, I will soon finish, so don't worry. Psalm 7. I want to show you. Uh, this is where my heart is this night. Psalm 7 verse 11. I want to read it. It says, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Are you a wicked person? God is angry with you every day. So what will you do? You have to change it. You can never survive the anger of God. Oh, it's not, it's not possible. If you stay in the anger of God, Every day, it will destroy you. God is angry for the wicked continually, every day. And then, if you look at Hebrew 12, Hebrew 12, it will show you a mystery. Praise God. I, I hope I got it right in this scripture. But I hope, yes, I think so. Hebrew 12, verse 29. Let's see. Praise God. I, I, I believe I got it right. Praise Jesus. Amen. You know, sometimes you just get the scriptures on your head 
and uh, <laughs> praise God. Uh, Hebrew 12, 29. Let's see what it says. If not, then I will get you something. Amen. It, it, it tells me that God is a consuming fire. That's what it tells me. It says God is a consuming fire. But if you now go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, you find out that the wrath of God is on anyone who refuses Jesus Christ as a son of God. If you refuse Jesus Christ as a son of God, the wrath of God is upon you permanently. It is a mystery. Anyone that refuses Jesus Christ as the son of God is carrying the wrath of God permanently. It is, it is a mystery. But that is true. That's what the Bible tells us. Praise God. You know, praise the Lord. Now, I think, let, I'm right. John, John 3, 36. John 3, 36. Let's look at it. I want everybody to understand this mystery. He said, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. This is what God wants to say. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. My God, that's serious. Are you a person that don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God? He said, he that believeth on the Son. It's the Bible that said, not me. It's the Bible that said it. He that believeth on the Son had everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life once you're living for him. But he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. It means when you die, you can never see eternal life. He said, but the wrath of God. He means, you see, anybody who refuses Jesus Christ, before God, you're a wicked man. And the Bible says that God is continually angry with the wicked. Are you, are you listening to me this time? Have you refused Jesus Christ as the Son of God? And you're watching this program. Today is a day you must remove the wrath of God from you. Take it away. You have a right. God has given you the right to turn the rats away from you. From you. It is in your hand. God has given you all that you need for life and for godliness. Second Peter 1 3. Verse 3. God has given you all that you need for life and for godliness. Your salvation is just before you. Before you. If you accept it, you have eternal life. If you don't accept it, the wrath of God remains on you. Do you want to accept Jesus Christ this night as your Lord and your Savior? This night. I want to lead you this night. In the name of Jesus. So why not follow me and let's pray. And repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I have come to understand that the wrath of God is on my life. Because I have refused you. But today, I have come to accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Show me mercy. Remove your wrath from me. And wash me with the, word of, with the blood of Jesus, with your blood. Thank you for accepting me this night. You accepted the thief on the cross. I know you've accepted me by you because your word says so. That whoever that comes to you, you shall not cast out. Thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. I appreciate you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just by saying this simple prayer, God has just led you to this great thing. Your name is written in the book of life. You are no longer under the wrath of God. You are, now, you are now a child of God. So what do you do? You need to build on this salvation. So you buy yourself a Bible. Be a member of a church. Learn and grow. And God will bless you. 
say welcome to the kingdom of God. Are you a Christian? Have you given your life to Jesus? And you're still living in sin and you're living a life that is not pleasing to God. Have you been deceived with the concept of grace that once you're born again, you're born again and you live your life anyhow? No, the wrath of God can still come on you. Every sin attracts the wrath of God. So why not you just repent today and tell God to forgive you? That's one good thing about this blood of Jesus. It washes away the sin. It washes away the sins. And I love what Jesus said. The Bible tells us, whosoever confesses his sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. I pray for you this night that the blood of Jesus would wash you, cover you, look after you this night, secure your homes and secure your life. May God put a hunger in your heart for him. May God put a hunger for him inside you completely. In Jesus' name, I rebuke every demon that has been afflicting your life. I rebuke every curse in your heart, in your life. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I speak life to you. And may God bless you. That sickness will not hold anymore. I promise you. In Jesus' name. Jesus is good. Oh, he's blessed my life. Ah. <sighs> Since I met him, my life has never been the same again. Will you join me and follow him? God bless you. Have a good night's sleep. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.